Call it Paul Bubba Sparks. Booty, yeah, booty, booty, rock and never wear. Booty, booty. It's Desi and I'm back with another video you guys and this video is going to talk about as far as for the NHA which is going to be the National Healthcare Association for Medical Assistant. Currently right now I have the two study guides you guys. This one is going to be for the clinical medical assistant test and this one is going to be for the administrative uh, I'm sorry yes yeah, certified administrative medical assistant test and this is to kind of tell you guys the two difference on here um if you guys do hear the mowing of the lawn in the back um it is people cutting their yard right now so that's why but I figured I'll do this video just to kind of go over a little bit as far as for the um the study guide to see as far as for what to expect oh I'm so sorry y'all I'm tired all right, so the first one I'm gonna start off, I'll do a part one as far as for the um, administrative medical assistant test, and then I'll do a part two for the um, clinical medical assistant test. Now, the difference between these two, one, the administrative medical assistant test, this one is 110 scored items, 20 will be pre-test items, and the exam time is gonna be two hours and 10 minutes. On this one, with the um, clinical one, that one is 150 scored items, 30 will be pre-test, and then three hours as far as for the test to get completed. Now, I have been seeing a lot of comments where people are like, oh my gosh, I'm about to take my test soon. Please let me know as far as for how to help and whatnot. If you guys check down the links down below, I'll be able to tell you as far as for everything that was on the NCC um, T exam. That's the one I took as far as for my medical assistant experience. And then also I have on there the NHA and um, AAMA. It's all different types of ones. So leave them and check the links down below that's attached to this video. And that can kind of, you know, guide you where you want to be at. But as far as for this... um you know study guide i feel like this is really good how it kind of goes in depth as far as for what you'll be studying um one thing i can say is that they have the number of items that'll be on here and then a little bit more as far as for in depth what you'll need to study on so starting off first scheduling so as far as for scheduling that'll be on there as far as for administrative medical assistant basically when it's in the real world basically you'll have to use whatever electronic health records or electronic medical records that you have emr ehr ours we have eclinicals and basically it'll tell you in real life we'll schedule the patients ourselves so you'll see as far as for how to go on there on how to schedule the patients on the test i could tell on here is different types of scheduling that'll be a little bit more explained so you have to identify the type of patient scheduling will it be a uh, wave book scheduling double book scheduling also you need to know the knowledge of um, modified wave also open booking so you want to make sure you kind of know those those are also on the ncct test as well too but that's just nevertheless like i said that's just to a minimum as far as for stuff that you should already know um also you should determine whether scheduling needs of the facility as well as new established patients uh, patients so basically as far as for scheduling new patients seeing the importance as far as for that you also make sure that they follow up as far as for the protocol if there are no show missed canceled or follow-up appointments so we do have where we change the colors as far as for if patients you know pretty much don't show up or whatnot now some facilities do charge for a no show but personally us we don't but it is more information you need to know as far as for scheduling as far as for just like you know changing the colors and stuff like that it's a little bit more that you should know about for that um also on here it says that you need to know as far as for arranging the patients for testing and procedures so you need to see if they need a prior authorization or anything like that that is prior to scheduling as well too so those are type of things that you want to make sure that you um you know you point out as far as for that also it says on here confirming future appointments so on here the the hipaa guidelines um says on here whether we should or should not disclose the scheduling or confirm future appointments depending on whatever the patient has to do so you want to make sure that you kind of know as far as for that also on here you want to make sure that you verify the copay the review the insurance making sure that you review the form of photo identification view changes as far as for the coverage all that is very important when it comes to insurance so more more so like the administrative side is more so like where you just have to make sure that you stay on top of all the insurance information for the patient you don't want to like lose information as far as for that also make sure that all their forms are completed because a lot of patients they're new and whatnot and they never really complete anything um it's very important just to keep up with record or release forms that's another thing that we usually do whenever a patient say for instance they go get um they go get an injection done at care spot or something like that at the end of the day we will have to send a records of release form to care spot in order to get the office notes or any type of procedure that they have done for the patient at care spot so you want to make sure that you're on top of that as well too 
also perform um prepare encounter forms so encounters here well, at my job encounters is basically when i'm writing a note to the doctor so even though me and the doctor work side by side we're getting calls throughout the day all the time as far as for what to tell the doctor information and all that stuff like that so um with patients basically we write an encounter every time whenever we're updating something we write on an encounter the good thing about the encounter that i like is whenever it's like time stamp that means that you're looking further into like it shows the time that we i wrote you it shows the name of you know myself and then i could be able to write my explanation and then it shows where you could send it to the doctor and whatnot or whoever it needs to get sent to if i need to send an encounter to the front desk i can send one to the front desk if i need to send an encounter to the doctor i can send one to the doctor so it all just depends also prepare a daily chart so basically on a daily chart you'll create a medical records um ensure delivery to the proper physician so you want to make sure like all the information is going to the right physician um, regardless of any type of information that's getting sent you want to make sure that you have the correct charts as far as for that um, the right information the right progress note those type of things um, also you want to make sure that you perform uh, financial procedure so meaning as in whenever a procedure needs to get done and it's like a certain amount of money that the patient needs to pay for you want to make sure you have that all organized as well too here at our clinic the doctor usually charges around like 75 for like a patient that self pay and also 75 if depending on the injection that you get because some injections can go up to two hundred dollars but however you want to make sure that you just collect the co-pays co uh, create statements create receipts for the patients because some patients do want receipts um, just do those type of things compliance you always want to follow HIPAA guidelines whenever dealing with anything dealing with the patients always follow the HIPAA guidelines you want to make sure that you know as far as for making sure the patient's privacy and health is all secure you want to make sure all that is just completely right um, also as far as for making sure that you evaluate the mail deliveries when I mean as in that most people don't think mail is like something important when it comes to medical assistant but it really is because like here with pain management we have deliveries where we have to make sure that we collect the um the labels and whatnot as far as for whenever i'm doing like the urine drug testing and whatnot i have to make sure i have the ups labels i also have to have the millennium labels quest labels all those type of lab labels and not only that with pain management we deal with a lot of pain pump patients so we also have to order the pain pump as far as for the patient as well too we deal with ais or something like that um we need to know as far as for a fast delivery when will it be here that way we can know how to schedule the patient around that time as well too so scheduling is pretty important you guys like it's, it's very important when it comes to administrative patient education so this is pretty much on my part as well too whenever the doctor is done giving an injection he always likes to educate the patient as far as for what to do next so whenever they're done getting say for instance a zarella injection basically he'll give you a um, workout form to kind of help out whatever department that he gave you the injection in so if he gave you one in the knee he's going to give you certain type of like physical therapy exercises to kind of do to kind of strengthen out the knee and making sure that the medication administrate right so it won't be any issues on that um, so you want to make sure that you follow up as far as for patient education after procedures and whatnot Explain the patient's insurance responsibilities as well, too This is a big one like one thing about me with medical assistant I prefer back office because front office they deal with a lot of issues when it comes to patient insurance responsibilities The patients will really one thing you're going to notice with working in a medical field patients will not do anything when it comes to their insurance They always want us to do everything for them Like whether it's calling their insurance to see what their copay is calling this and calling that calling this and calling that Certain questions you should already know like say for instance me. I handle prior authorizations Patients will literally like be like, um, yeah, I just started a new insurance and I don't know if they cover for the medication I used to be on Those are questions you should ask before you sign up for new insurance You should ask them. Hey, do you cover Percocet because I've been on this for years and I know that you know Certain regulations changed. Are you still going to cover me for 30 day supply of Percocet? You know those type of things you also want to explain to the patients the difference between co-pays and co-insurance a lot of patients don't like to pay or anything they don't like to pay their deductibles you want to explain deductibles it's made the allowed amounts also the basic knowledge of insurance practices you want to just make sure that you stay on top of all those type of things greet patients upon arrival you always want to do that as well too when it comes to scheduling because most patients don't want to go to a rude office so that's definitely important as well too. apply telephone um you know skills as far as for that because you will be on the phone a lot um demonstrate basic computer skills making sure that you understand everything with microsoft is a major thing as well too whether it's microsoft word microsoft excel making sure you know how to deal with a copy machine fax machine scanners we will scan all documents anything that a doctor do for the patient always has to get scanned so that's definitely a major term as well too and making sure you understand medical terminology like i said most patients they'll try to 
you know, throw you off because they feel like only the medical assistant knows certain things and they'll throw the front desk off and really in reality it's like look we all are like medically trained here so whatever you have to say to her you can say to me so we all be on the same page. Um, these are just the basics as far as for the National Healthcare Association study guide. Again this is for the CMAA. This is going to be for the clinical medical uh, I'm sorry administrative medical assistant and I kind of just went over everything that will be on the test for you guys if you guys have any questions as far as for this one don't forget to comment down below because I will check that in the meantime I will do a part two as far as for the clinical medical assistant so hopefully this will be able to help you and to anybody that's sticking their chest good luck to you and I wish you the best